Hello, my name is Patrick Feeney. This video is about how to teach input and output processing using the famous Arduino microprocessor. This is the circuit that we're going to be building and programming. It's a simple circuit. All it does is light an LED with a push button. The button is the input and the light emitted by the LED is the output. So you might ask, why create such a complicated contraption to perform such a simple task as lighting an LED? Students engage particularly well with physical objects, such as Arduinos, robots, video game controllers. The ability to touch and feel things generates an enthusiasm and provides a deeper understanding and more lasting memories. In the educational world, this is called a kinesthetic model of learning, and it's known to be very effective. Also, it's important to show students how the principles of computation can apply to things in the real world beyond the PC. It's not just about programming on a flat screen. It's about a range of useful 3D objects and other electronic systems. We should note that until recently, no one would have dreamed of working with microprocessors outside of a specialized electronics lab like you find in a university. But today, with useful and affordable tools such as the Arduino, and a helpful community of hobbyists and teachers, we can do physical computing even in secondary school. In this lesson, we will assume that you have a basic understanding of programming and have at least read about Arduino microprocessors and what they can do. We will go straight into the setup and then jump into an example lesson about handling input and output. To study the circuit more carefully, go to the website s 4 a .cat and click Docs. There, you'll see a nice schematic diagram of the circuit. Now on to programming. We're going to write programs for our Arduino circuit using blocks instead of the standard method of programming the Arduino, which involves a scripting language that is intimidating to most students. The visual language that we have chosen is Scratch for Arduino, which is based on Scratch, the well-known kid's programming environment. You'll need to download and install Scratch for Arduino, as well as the Arduino's native software and development environment. We'll leave you to do this on your own time. Here's a view of the Scratch for Arduino interface. For now, let's focus especially on the left-hand side, which is a list of all the blocks available in Scratch for Arduino. And also on the scripts area in the center, where the blocks from the left get dragged in order to make a program. We typically begin to code a Scratch for Arduino program with a control block that tells the program to run when the green flag in the corner is clicked. So I will start my program by dragging a when green flag clicked block onto the top of my script area. Now our LED circuit requires only the simplest of logic. We want to listen and detect whether the user has pressed the push button and we will light the LED if the button has been pressed. So this requires an if else block. The if else block latches underneath the green flag block conveniently like this. Inside the if condition, we add a block that senses whether the push button at digital 2 has been pressed. If the condition is true, we trigger the current at pin 13 to light the LED. This requires another blue block, digital 13 on. And if the button has not been pressed and the condition is false, we keep the pin 13 and therefore the LED turned off. The only other thing we need is a loop, which makes the program keep continuously asking questions about the state of the button. 
In Scratch, this is accomplished with a forever block. The forever block will wrap around our if statement like this. Now, the if statement will get called repeatedly while the program is running. In other event-driven programming languages, this is called an event listener. Let's run the program. We click the green flag, push the button on the Arduino circuit, and we have success. The LED lights up when we press the button. Our program works. This simple program could be the basis for a great lesson on input and output for students as young as 12. It would fit well within the theme real-world systems in any good computer science curriculum. But let's take the UK as an example. The new computing at school requirements demand that students ages 11 to 14 design, use, and evaluate computational abstractions that model the state of real-world problems and physical systems. Our Arduino activity would be very appropriate. Plus, it could be presented to young students as a fun, hands-on project. Let's build the buttons for a vending machine or for a video game controller. Our Arduino circuit is a great way for teachers to tie in the programming aspects of the course with the lessons on hardware. Too often, computer science courses merely ask students to identify peripheral devices. A lesson on programmable circuits would fill in a missing piece. It would give students a fuller picture of how computers might interact with their peripheral devices. We hope you'll see the value of using Arduinos to teach computer science concepts. Arduinos are not only useful to teach programming, but they introduce kids to a whole world of interactive electronic objects. More and more, teachers are using robotics and programmable hardware in their classroom. We hope this lesson inspires you, too, to get started with physical computing.